This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to a special update edition of Couples Court. With us today is our aftercare specialist, Dr. Jeff Gardier, and joining us later is Grammy-nominated singer Angie Stone with her special take on relationships. Dr. Jeff, after court, you have been there to help our litigants deal with the truths that have come to light in our courtroom. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's always a pleasure, thank you. Let's take a look at one of our couples, the Beardens, whose marriage was in crisis due to Mr. Bearden's habitual cheating. I get a ring at the doorbell. I go to the door. He come follow behind, come down the stairs. It's a sonogram on the door. I don't even think that sonogram was for me anyway. Who was it That for? was like, that was supposed to could have been anybody's baby or something like that. I mean, come on now, at the end of the day, how really? you can tell off a sonogram that that's actually my child? Like, she could have probably already was with been her, pregnant though. at the you end was, of the day, so. You was with her, right? I don't believe that was my, my baby. This woman that you were texting, have you been intimate with that woman? Yes. When was the last time you were with this woman? Intimately? <sighs> like, a, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago. I feel hurt. I feel, I feel used. <laughs> with the Beardens, there wasn't just one instance of cheating. He cheated multiple times in the past. But the question is, did their relationship survive? Hey, hey Couples, couples court. court, with the Cutlers. It's me, Yolanda. And Jerome. Hope you're watching this, Jeff, because I mean, I'm trying to prove to you, man, and, and definitely Mr. and Mrs. Cutlers, um, that, I mean, every inspirational word that you gave me, it was just, I'm, I'm definitely putting it into play. And we're doing great. We're doing yeah. so great that we might be expecting. <laughs> so, bye. Bye bye. Okay, Dr. Jeff, his wife slipped in at the end that they might be expecting. And I do hope it works out for them. But my question is, what do you believe are the reasons that made people cheat in the first place? The thing that I see that happens with many different couples is day-to-day -day life. The kids, the working all the time, the finances, all of those things can begin to wear down a relationship and finally just break it down completely. How much does boredom play into cheating? Well, let's face it, Judge. I mean, boredom is something that happens in every relationship. And that's why it's so important to try as hard as possible to keep it going and deal with the boredom, but in a constructive way. Mr. Cullen and I, we have to work hard to keep boredom out of our relationship. I think we do a good job of that. I agree, love. Now, for this next case, this couple's marriage plans came to a screeching halt when Miss Manning discovered that her living boyfriend was making plans with an old flame. I have the text messages where him and his ex were texting back and forth to each other. Why do you need to know if your ex still has feelings for you? Because I wasn't the one that ended our relationship, Your Honor. My ex was, so therefore, I was, I was wanting and needing closure on that. Me and my But she ended it. That's as much closure as you can get. Mr. Curtis was asked, have you had any sexual intercourse with the ex with which you were caught texting? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? There was no significant response to this question, which is an indication that the subject was being truthful. Now, Dr. Jeff, you met with this couple after court, and they're planning to get married next year. Are you surprised at all by this? Not at all, because one of the things that we do know is that sometimes you have to give that second chance to the relationship and also begin to forgive some of the past mistakes of the relationship. Very well said, Dr. Jeff. There are times when infidelity issues run very deep. In the case of Penner versus Martin, Mr. Penner had a deep suspicion that his girlfriend was sneaking around with someone else. I made one mistake. I've owned up to it. I've apologized. I've jumped through hoops. But I wouldn't be here if I didn't, if I didn't love that man. Like, I want to marry him. We got two children. I'm not lying about anything. My mom always told me, don't go on a woman person because she might have a snake in it and you might get bit. So, but I didn't listen. I didn't listen. I got bit. If yeah. you go in. Is that, in, is that if why you, you told me not to go in your purse all these years? Because you got a snake in there? I won't say I have a snake in there, but if you go in there and you're not supposed to, something will bite you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, did you get bit? Yeah, I got going bit in her purse? Because I found, uh, I found a, a condom in there. Oh. Oh. Now, I, 
mind you, now mind you, we have Not children. We have children story. together. We haven't been wearing no condom, and and it was an extra schmedium, and I don't wear that. Why are you playing? You know what I'm saying? It was a what? A what? An extra schmedium. What is the extra? It's small and medium at the same time. Oh my god. Schmedium. That's not your okay. size. That ain't my what size. How did he find an extra schmedium in your purse? Because Romeo goes through everything I own. Has she cheated in the past that's made you feel the way you feel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, um, she cheated in the past. Um, she had this real big party. So a month later, she comes to me, she's like, you know, I'm pregnant. Shortly after that, she says, I, I, that night I had sex with somebody and I didn't use protection. I really don't know it. I don't even know the guy's name. So okay. from that point right there, I said, oh, man, I was tripping. Wow. We have to take a break, but stay with us to find out if this relationship survived. Welcome back to Couples Court. We're here with the court's aftercare expert, Dr. Jeff Gardier, and we're getting updates on couples who came through our courtroom. Before we went to break, we found out Mr. Penner wasn't a schmedium. But is Ms. Martin a cheater? Let's see what happened. Since the birth of your first child, have you had sexual contact with anyone other than Mr. Penner? What was Ms. Martin's response? Her response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. I knew it. Ms. Martin failed the lie detector test and denied cheating. But in this case, they decided to stay together. So I guess they can't see themselves without each other. Dr. Jeff, we heard the case of Robinson versus Gregory. Mr. Robinson swore his wife was cheating because their sex life went downhill after they got married. Take a look at this. There has been a slight decline in the rate of incidence of the sexual activity. The quality has been a vast decline. February, in orange, yeah. three times a day. Uh, the next month, March, three times a day. The next month is April in orange. Ooh. Every single day I turn around, you're a cheater, you're a cheater. It's not fair. Has Ms. Gregory had sexual contact with any other man other than Mr. Robinson? She said no. What did the lie detector show? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. Dr. Jeff, Mr. Robinson and his wife were newlyweds. We have a video update, so let's find out if their marriage has survived. Things have been uh, a lot, I'd say, 80-90% better ever since coming to the couple's court. I feel like I've gotten a lot of clarity out of it. My favorite part is that the calendar's gotten a lot more full. Oh. Here at Couples Court, we are all about second chances. Dr. Jeff, didn't they look happy? They looked very happy, and I have to give them a lot of credit for doing the hard work of repairing their relationship. When we come back, we'll be joined by Grammy-nominated singer Angie Stone. And we have some more updates to come. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're here finding out if couples stayed together or broke up after getting the truth. Joining us now is one of our friends of the court, Grammy-nominated singer Angie Stone. The last time you were in our courtroom, you gave advice to a couple dealing with trust issues and a 16-year age gap. That was the case of Winborn versus Winborn. Let's look. He FaceTimed me, and then his ex pops around the front of the camera. Hi, you know. She's not telling you all the details of that. I don't day have them. And how everything went down. <laughs> wait, 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 I, I got an answer. No, no, no. I, 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 let, okay, go ahead. I, I go got ahead. an answer. Go Why would you FaceTime your <laughs> wife with your ex right there? I, I FaceTimed her, and my ex showed up because I have my kids that day. So we have our friend of the court, Grammy-nominated singer, Angie Stone. In this case, she's afraid of an ex. Mm -hmm. She's concerned about an ex. She should be, because mm -hmm. you are afraid and insecure. And I say insecure because ain't no way in the world you can be married two months and you just find all these things out in two months when you've been with them for years. Some of these signs had to already be there. Mr. Winborn was asked, did you have sexual contact with your ex from July 2016 to now. What was his response to that question? He said no. And what did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was deceptive. Whatever you did to get it, baby, you got to stay there to keep it. 
fucking can't do it. <laughs> so, Angie, when it comes to the Winborns, what do you think Miss Winborn decided to do after leaving our courtroom? Well, if she took the advice that I gave her, I think they probably are, are going to be doing better. Well, we have your answer. Let's check out their video and see where things stand. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. You know, Angie, you were a huge part of this healing process because it took a lot for us to realize what it takes to make a relationship yeah. like this work. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, that's <laughs> great. And how does it make you feel to know that you help them get to where they are now. Well, it lets me know that we go through things, not just for us, but for other people. And I just wish I had a me to talk to me back then, and maybe I'd have ended up like, they ended up. <laughs> Everybody can use an Angie Stone. I, I know, that's right. Can you stay with us for another case? Absolutely. All right, let's revisit the case of Lockhart versus Rogers. I was getting in my car. There's cigarette butts with lipstick on them in the ashtray. There's a reasonable explanation for all that. And I also found empty condom box on the passenger side. That's not my size. I can't wear those, so. So if it doesn't fit, we must acquit. Are you cheating? No, I'm not cheating. The polygraph determined that you were being truthful. <laughs> he passed the lie detector test, so I hope things worked out. She was holding on by a thread. Everything that I sensed, I can honestly tell you that I don't think they will survive. All right, well, we'll see. During our session with Dr. Jeff, there were questions about the baby's paternity. So we may or may not need a DNA test. So although he was talking to other girls, it kind of made me want to venture out and start talking to other guys. He found out, and uh, you would have thought the world came to an end, uh, the type that can dish it but can't take it. I come home from work early, a few weeks ago, and he had some ugly girl in the house. So, needless to say, it's over. Jeez, after all that, she tried to play his game and talk to other men. <laughs> and guess what? It was way too late to start playing games. Well, she said they may need a DNA test, so maybe we should send them over to Judge Lake at paternity court. <laughs> she can get the job done. That's a great idea. We're almost at the end, but we can't leave out the case of Knowlton versus Knowlton. Mrs. Knowlton thought her husband was the perfect man until she began to suspect that he cheated with one of her family members. He tried to mess with a family member of mine. He put in the message that how he wanted to have oral sex with her, how bad he wants her, and when I go to work to come over to the house. I don't even know your honor what's going on or why her family member would tell her that. He don't even talk to me like that. The things that he put in the message was like so provocative. It was like, I was like, ooh, I was hot. You know, it, was, it turned me on, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, this is my husband, but he's telling somebody, another woman this. It hurt me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ooh. Mr. Knowlton was asked, have you had sexual intercourse with any other woman? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, his response to that question was also no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector examination determined that he was again deceptive. <laughs> Infidelity with a family member is hard to get past. What do you think? Oh, my God. Infidelity, period, is hard to get through. But with a family member, is definitely out of the question. Well, Ms. Knowlton checked in with the court and informed us that they were not able to work through it. And they are filing for divorce. OK, so are you ready for our final case of the day? It was an emotional case that really heated up when Miss Sanchez Brown saw hidden camera footage of her husband with another woman. We'll have that for you after the break. Couples Court is back. We're here with our special guest, Angie Stone. Angie, before the break, we were discussing the case of Miss Sanchez Brown. Mm -hmm. During the course of our investigation, we secured hidden camera footage of Mr. Brown interacting with another woman. Take one, Um, 773. I'm gonna call you. If you don't care, I'm gonna take you. Uh, did I do that? Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? We also had Mr. Brown to undergo a polygraph examination, and we have those results. Mr. Brown was asked, did you use the condoms your wife found in your house 
to have sex with women other than your wife? What was his response? Your Honor, he said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, there was a significant physiological response to this question, indicating deception. How dare you ever think I'm dumb for you, Sean? Really? Really? I done had your back from the lowest to the highest, Sean. How dare you? Angie, as you saw, Mr. Brown's wife wasn't just angry. She was mad. She was really, really mad. When you hear your husband's cheating or your spouse is cheating is one thing, but seeing is believing. We have an update from the Browns. Watch this. We've been working on our marriage, been moving forward. Haven't been arguing lately, so it's good. We took the advice from the cuddlers to talk things out. So thank you. It is truly amazing how Mr. Brown and his wife have been able to come together and talk through their issues. Are you surprised as I am? I'm super surprised. I didn't think it would last. I was somewhat surprised, but, you know, they took the time to talk it out and work it out, and a lot of times that makes all the difference in the world. Angie, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciated your comments and your input. Well, you know I love you guys. Thank you, and whenever you need me, I'm here. We welcome your questions and comments. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as we say in our courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of a chance for a happy, healthy relationship. We'll see you next time.